taking a lot from these guns today. We're shooting them till they get hot, and then we want them to be 100% reliable. It was 100% on that run. Yeah. Wearing the dirt as a badge of honor. Testing complete in the Nut and Fancy project. This is one of the Smith & Wesson 1522s that were representing the type in TMP. Lots of rounds sent down range between these two guns. It's taken me months to knock this review out. Thanks for being patient. I know there's a lot of TMPers all over the place that have really wanted me to do the tabletop review. I just don't rush it when I really like the item. I really like the Smith & Wesson 1522. In fact, the MOE version you see slammed on the tail right there, that's mine. This one's on loan in TMP. So I had two models to get my data from. All right, and hello world if you haven't figured it out. Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review, Tactical 22 Carbine. Here we go, via talking points. Lots of ground to cover, short time to get there. I'll do the very best I can in imparting the truth as I know it right now. My data that I've revealed in my own testing. And it's probably stuff you won't or have not heard elsewhere because I have a few surprises in store for you. They, I, I know they're gonna be surprises. Uh, it's mostly good on the 1522. Uh, to the point I don't plan on selling mine. Okay, I'm gonna keep it. Love it, let's jump right into it. Uh, I'll get to POU here in a sec. Let's talk about the models. Breaking out the Smith & Wesson catalog here. Um, the one you see in the front here is model number 811034. That is my favorite. That is the MOE version. You guys see uh, saw me get kind of excited about the MOE version at 2010 SHOT Show with Smith & Wesson when uh, I looked at it in person for the first time. Not that it was that much different from the regular version. 811033. Okay, that's A1 bird cage, removable sights. The one that had been out a while. I just like the value of the MOE and it saves me some hassle and it has some other additions I'll talk about when we get down the TPs a little bit. Uh, when the type first came out, it was that one, 811030. Plain muzzle, removable sights, just like the other one on previous page, just a plain muzzle. Ugly, hate it. Not the gun, I don't like a plain muzzle. I would have sent mine off and got it threaded. I just would have. Uh, luckily they solved that with the latest versions. And here we go to our poor TMPers who live in the, you know, California. There's a California vi uh, version. <clears throat> and there's a Connecticut, Massachusetts, and those poor guys down there. They have to go with that one. Fixed stock and all that other nonsense. So, snapshot in time, that's the versions of the 1522 right now. Okay, so I think we got a good representation in TMP. On to POU we go. First up, again, you probably haven't heard this. Maybe you have, I don't know. I really don't have time to look. I think philosophy of use for the 1522 is an AR-15 test bed. Yep, I think it's a great way for you to economically go and test certain accessories for perhaps your regular centerfire AR-15 carbine. Uh, now granted, if you get the MOE version, you're probably not gonna put on a different stock, but you could. Okay, you could put on a different rear stock, you put on different pistol grip, you could put all kinds of accessories on the polymer quad rail. Okay, you could go with different optic setups and go try that. And the, the beauty of the rim fire is you can go out and shoot it and shoot it a lot. Just like we did in my firefight tactical 22 drill that I came up with. By the way, when I got done with that drill, I was exhausted. Oh my gosh, what a butt kicker it was. I don't know if it, it's because I just didn't sleep the night before, but man, I was tired. I came home and veg. I couldn't even move. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's expending, what was it, like 140 Shoot. rounds in the firefight drill? Uh, it's a lot of shooting. And uh, OJ came out, Crockett 20 came out in that drill. They said the same thing. They're like, dude, this is a butt kicker. A lot of movement, 
and that's good. Uh, and, and that movement is a great way, again, to maybe test the ergonomics, uh, the viability of different components you want to run on your center fire. And maybe you need to shoot a lot to find out if you like it. Okay, nice. maybe it's a red dot, maybe it's a scope. Okay, so 20, I think an AR-15 test bed. That's kind of an original POU, I think. Uh, recreational, obviously. It's fun to get these guns out and shoot them. Oh, is it fun. Uh, I think that I made that clear, perhaps, in that video. I'll annotate it, if I haven't already. The firefight drill. Good times. Uh, especially for guys who really like the tactical carbine. You know, they maybe they can't go afford or go and afford shooting center fire. You know, that 223556, five, that's expensive. You know, AR-15, a different caliber, still expensive. Recreationally, just getting out, you know, shooting your spinner plates, your rim fire dueling tree, which I just did a review on. Fun times. Family, friends making those memories, setting up all kinds of drills. Dudes, you get it by now. And TMP, I'm all about you making memories. Uh, training. I broke that out separately from AR-15 test bed because as a test bed, we're trying, maybe we're testing a VG, uh, a vertical grip, optic, stuff I just said, maybe some BUIS. Um, but for training, what we're doing is perhaps training our muscle memory on the AR-15 platform. Again, we're doing it affordably with a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. And they did an outstanding job of mimicking the AR-15 to include what a rarity last shot hold open. Very simple you would think, but a lot of guns do not have that and it has a functioning bolt release. Okay, just like you would normally do in the center fire counterpart. Training, you know, the ergonomics are identical. We'll recover that again in TPs, uh, but those are the POUs. Oh, one other. I will say, this is gonna be funny. You guys will crack up at this. Uh, survival gun. Yep, I said that with a Smith, uh, not the Smith, but the kel right? SU-22, I have one right here. Whoa, yeah, that's a good survival gun. This one's super lightweight, good firepower, and we're talking about rounds count with SU-22. Well, guess what? The 1522, about the same. Okay, 25 round magazine, relatively lightweight, five and a half pounds. Um, honestly, I'd probably choose the SU-22 over it because that is uh, a pound and a half lighter at four pounds, roughly. Um, to me, pounds and that weight is everything when I'm carrying it on my back. Um, but there's a big advantage, not a big advantage, a an advantage of the 1522. And I'm going to call it a sheep and wolf's clothing. You know what I'm saying? If someone sees you standing with this 1522, are they going to know that it's a 22? Chances are they're not. They're going to think that it's just a regular AR-15 and you are, I don't know, most people look at you, if, you know, in WROL and say, there's some freak standing there with a carving, you know. Maybe that's what you want, you know, especially if rioting's going on. And guys say, well, why wouldn't you have your normal AR-15? One word, weight. Okay, center fire ammo is a lot heavier. Um, the, the magazines, uh, maybe not the magazines, but the ammunition and the gun itself, all the accessories, this is a much lighter option. And perhaps you're rolling it into some type of kit, which I'll speak to in the future, and therefore weight, SAWC, extremely critical. That's why, there's your answer. Um, ideally, yeah, we'd love to have our AR-15, our AK variant rifle, all, all kinds of other tactical carvings but maybe this is all you have, and it's kind of a cool thing to have the looks that mimic that center fire uh, alternative, or counterpart, better said. On with the talking points, innovation and design. Smith & Wesson opts to use polymer in the 1522. Okay, the upper, lower, quad handrail, all polymer, and I do think mostly, not entirely, but mostly it is a good thing. Uh, you may be surprised to hear that from me because I'm the king of lightweight, right? I love the lightweight knives, guns, flashlights, and uh, I'm stoked about the five and a half pound carry weight of the 1522. There is a downside of the polymer. I'll talk about it when we get to accuracy. I think it's minor given the POU. Okay, perhaps another downside might be training. That guys will say, well, five and a half pounds is maybe a little bit too light. I would want something, you know, as a trainer for my AR-15s, a little bit heavier. Okay, uh, maybe they'll opt for that other gun, the Colt Umarex. It's also a tactical 22 with AR-15 ergos, uh, metal uh, receiver. It's about a half pound heavier. 
Okay, and I do not prefer it for several reasons. Uh, but some guys might like the metal one. Okay, I say if you really want to make your 1522 heavy, that's easy to do. I mean, just opt for a certain optic. You can load up a whole bunch of crap on your front end if you want to. Uh, with a caveat that it is polymer, not metal. So you might have some issues with that. Um, I don't know. I'll discuss that in accuracy. Uh, it'd be easy enough to do. Uh, we're talking about innovation design. The design is outstanding because I think the Smith & Wesson engineers did their very best, again, I think I've mentioned this already, mimicking the ergonomics and operation of the AR-15 M4 series. Okay, and that, to include how the gun breaks down, maybe I'll show that in field strip if I have time. Uh, the manipulation of arms, all that good stuff. Good job, Smith & Wesson. I'm going to keep cranking. Next talking point, materials and quality. Uh, I've talked about the polymer already. One thing I haven't talked about is the excellent barrel on the current day, that is uh, coming up on the end of 2010, 1522s. Made out of 4140 steel featuring a 1 in 15 twist, my understanding made by Thompson Center, acquired by Smith & Wesson in 2006. I think the barrels on the 1522 are excellent. Excellent. Love them. Um, I got to be honest with you, one of it's my pet peeve. You guys, if you've been watching my reviews on various guns, not just the Tactical 22, uh, I don't really dig the pencil thin barrels. No, we don't need a really thick barrel for a rimfire. I know that. It's just me. Uh, whenever I can, I would like just a little bit more support. And uh, also, it looks better. Uh, of course, it wouldn't hurt the accuracy very much in a rimfire. And actually, I've seen some earlier 1522s where the barrel will stick here and then under the taper, under the handguard, it tapers uh, thinner with certain models of 1522s. Uh, both of these versions, as you can see, has have continuous medium contour, both on the outside and underneath the handguard, and I prefer it. Okay, great job on the barrels, and they are threaded to accept muzzle accessories. Coming, uh, both the versions I showed you here, uh, arrive with an A1 um, AR-15 style flash suppressor. Okay, in other words, open on the bottom. Easy enough to spin off if you want to put my favorite, the 5C2 Phantom, on there or whatever. You can throw a suppressor on there. Um, not tested, sorry. Uh, just didn't have one to test, but totally doable. If I get to break the gun down, I'll show you the innards, and there you will see how the bolt rides on steel inserts within the receiver. I think that's a big quality plus for the 1522, and actually everything I see about the gun speaks of quality, for the most part. There, again, are a couple misses, and heck, we might as well just transition to that talking point right now. <laughs> Reliability and durability. The plot thickens. All right, everybody I talk to, and first off, let me tell you, I've sent a uh, probably between these two guns, I'm going to ballpark it, at least 1,500 rounds downrange, maybe more. I can't keep track of rimfire. We shoot so much. Me and the TMP crew, I'm not counting them. It's just there's no time. It's too much energy. It's all I can to do to go out and proctor those shoots as, as they are. Um, the gun is not 100% reliable. What? Nothing fancy my 1522. Man, I've shot so many rounds with that. I've never had a problem. Well, dude, if you've been watching TMP, I don't know what it is, but I just have a knack of bringing the worst out in a gun system. I know, it's crazy. It happens, though. And uh, I did experience a variety of jams with the 1522. Okay, and they kind of roll into the variety of, uh, let me see, this one, uh, I'm going to call this 1522 number one. It had the most problems, actually. I saw some stove pipes in this one, um, some just failures to feed. Um, and I'm not sure if that was like the 25th round coming out of a full magazine. I suspect it was because when I downloaded the magazine, this was at my outdoor range when I was doing accuracy testing. Uh, this didn't come in the running guns. Actually, it did earlier this year, but not in the firefight drill. Um, I just saw some failures to feed, some weird angles. Uh, it had issues. I don't know if it has the earlier extractor issues that some of the 1522s do. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is an issue out there. Um, that the extractor angle or something like that is jackballed on the 1522 and it can actually fire out of battery. So if the bolt is, I don't know, out about that far and you pull the trigger, it can actually ignite the trigger, um, not the trigger, but the, the, the round. Uh, anyways, uh, I think this is an earlier version of this 1522. It has not been modded by Smith & Wesson. Does that account for the worst reliability? I don't know. It was mostly reliable. 
Okay, I'll say this one was, I don't know, I'm gonna ballpark it, 98% reliable. How about the 1522 MOE, my gun? Still had some issues with it. Um, you know, I was disappointed in the firefight drill and other subsequent drill uh, running and gunning that we did with the gun. Then, you know, every so often I would have a stoppage. Uh, stove pipe in this gun, I don't think I saw a stove pipe in this one. I did see some interesting failures to feed coming from a variety of magazines. Uh, remember what I said in my review of the kel SU-22? I've talked about the Black Dog Jack of All Trades magazine. Hard to load, load, but it's closed on the side, right? No dust can get in? Well, well you've seen where we shoot, guys. Um, dust, and we're going rollover prone a lot. I may have had some dust ingestion come into the magazines, which resulted in feed issues. A normal magazine from the 1522 should look like that, how the round is angled up. In my running and gunning, I found them flat. And when the gun failed to feed, it, when we finished the run and gun, we're doing reliability testing. When we can slow oh, things down already. and look at what's happening, the, uh, I noticed that the round was flat. Uh, okay, it wasn't feeding. See, you know, I'd pop the follower and see if I could get it yeah. to work. Nope, still didn't. So I can't really blame it entirely on dust. I think that's kind of a cop out. It just happened. How often did it happen? Well, thankfully, it was pretty rare. Um, you know, while I was doing the firefight drill, very rarely. Um, but I did experience that and some other weird malfunctions during the drill that I didn't take time to diagnose or look at. Okay, and I'm not the expert on, well, what, what happened, you know? I don't have time to look at it. I'll just tell you, this one was about 99% reliable. Ballpark it. I'm ballparking it. Subjective. That one was about 98%. Okay. Um, so reliability was good. Uh, that's better than good. I will say it's excellent, but not outstanding. Okay. Um, the durability, I think, finishing that talking point, I think is excellent. I didn't see, I mean, I sent a lot of rounds through mine. I mean, a lot. The majority came through this gun. Uh, I did function, I did function testing with this. Okay. With all types of ammo. I have them here on the table. You know, federal bulk, Winchester 555. Uh, I, you know, I'm talking, I loaded up eight mags and just slammed them in as fast as I could, shooting and shooting and shooting. CCI Mini Max, Super X, all was, were ran through these guns, mostly my 1522 MOE. And uh, I was pretty impressed at the end there uh, because I didn't clean the gun. After firefight, I did not clean it. And uh, in my cycling, it was mostly reliable. A couple surprises were in store. Okay, does it matter on the ammunition you're going to use? Nothing fancy. I didn't see it. You know, if you look in the owner's guide for the Smith & Wesson 1522, it specifies, you know, CCI mini mags, don't shoot Remington Golden Saber, or not Golden Saber, but the Golden Bullets, which I think are garbage anyhow. Uh, names a couple other ones like Stingers, which I thought is very unusual. That's an expensive round. Uh, my take is it doesn't matter in the ammo. In fact, the federal bulk that I just showed you, this stuff right here, this cycled as good as any in the 1522. That's an upside, by the way, because there's a lot of guns to include the, uh, the kel SU-22, which are more finicky with this ammunition. Okay, again, the SIG 522, probably one of the most impressive reliability-wise tactical 22s I've seen yet. Okay, so that's reliability and durability. I can't speak durability. Make sure I didn't miss nothing. I want to summarize the reliability durability point by saying that most users of their 1522 report outstanding reliability. I'm talking a lot of people say they have no problems whatsoever nice. with their 1522s. I think the earlier ones, again, the out of battery condition that it could fire out of battery, there's a lot of information out there on that. Some guys, you know, tweaking their own um, uh, extractors to solve the problem. Probably not recommended. Just send it back to Smith & Wesson. Um, they will totally hook you up, and my understanding is they send you back a free magazine when they send it back in a very quick turnaround. Um, the newer 1522s, I'm talking maybe latter part of 2009. I don't know a particular serial number cutoff, so sorry. On into 2010, a lot fewer issues, a lot of great reports. Uh, my trusted associate and helper in some of this gun research at times, TMP Research, reports that out of his gun, 2,000 rounds without a single malfunction. And I have no doubt that he's talking truth. He keeps very meticulous records. It, it happened. And there's a lot of other guys out there too. I just don't want guys to say, oh, you know, nothing fancy had some jams with his 1522. Not only did I have them, I'm showing them to you. Okay, I've already shown you in Firefight. I'm going to show you some more in this video. Proof positive, they did happen. They're not made up. I don't make anything up in TMP. It's all fact that I see it and I'm passing it on to you. 
Um, but I don't want to condemn the gun at all. In fact, I think it's mostly outstanding. Okay, so that's kind of a reality check on the durability, uh, I'm sorry, the reliability, durability, talking point. Sometimes TMPers extrapolate my data, I don't know, maybe farther than it should be taken. That's all I'm saying. On to accuracy. <laughs> Lots to say on this uh, talking point as well, just like them all. Uh, two guns shot under controlled conditions, not in run and gun, but at an outdoor range, um, both with the red dot. That, by the way, is the outstanding, uh, at least in my experience, Bushnell TRS-25 red dot with a two MOA dot, which I love. Talked about that in my review. And then also the equally outstanding Weaver 3x9 rimfire scope with adjustable objective. Allows close range shooting. It's a 3x9, like I just said, relatively lightweight. Pretty good brightness level, good field of view. Eye relief is excellent for the price. Love that scope. Go and get one. Get two. They're excellent. Um, so that's what I used. That was a sh the optics equipment for this. First up, 25 yards, uh, 1522 number one. That's wearing the 3x9 Weaver. We're shooting CCI mini mags. There's my results. Uh, I found the CCI mini mags to be outstanding in accuracy. Look at that group. Granted, it's just 25 yards, whatever. And I think that was a flyer. So it actually might be part of that group. Five round strings. This one, by the way, this gun is wearing the standard trigger, which I'm not too impressed with. I'm kind of jumping down to ergonomics. This one, I slammed in a Rock River two-stage match trigger, installed it myself, and it's outstanding. I love it. That's another reason I love the 1522, that it can accept regular AR-15 accessories like the trigger. Great job. Got to move through these fast. There's another one. Same gun, 25 yards, 3x9 Weaver. Shot this in uh, last month, September. Great group there. Good there. Nice. Nice. You can get the gist. I sign all my targets. Perhaps if they find their way to the hands of some TMPers someday, they will know that it was on camera. It was me that shot it. Okay. There's Federal Bulk Ammo, 25 yards. You can see the groups open up a little bit with this ammo. Standard deviation kind of sucks on that ammo. Some failures to fire. Sometimes they just don't have primer material. You know, it just happens. But the price is right. Still very adequate for plinking and actually any type of training you want to do, the federal bulk ammo. And again, I didn't perceive a lot of difference reliability wise um, at, between the different ammunition types. This is mini mag. I don't know why I didn't label this, but there's a couple groups for there for you. All right, here we go. Ooh, the plot thickens again. This is 1522 number 1399 scope, 25 yards. CCI mini mag, good groups here. Remember I was talking about the polymer frame? It's mostly good, okay? There's a good group. Mm, kind of some horizontal stringing, maybe, I don't know, vertical stringing, maybe I just suck. Uh, but I'm really taking my times with these. Really taking my times. Check this out. Uh, I had a bipod attached to this weather was, I don't know, about 78 degrees, maybe 80 degrees. And I really kind of buckled into the gun, induced what I think, and I'm gonna call frame flex. I was aiming at this. Okay, remember the gun is right on. You can see the groups. And when I really you know, got into the gun and put some torque into it, this is where the rounds hit. Okay, I'm gonna call it frame flex. And it's I'm gonna attribute it to the polymer frame. It's not a metal chassis this gun's wearing, and that is a downside. If you want to bipod up with your 1522 and the weather's warm, why? Because I think the polymer's a little bit softer. You know, I, I could be wrong, but that's just my perception. Uh, we're talking a good three, maybe four inch difference in point of impact when I did that. And I was like, wow, that's really weird. I saw my rounds hitting there, so I really, you know, I got rid of that stress on the receiver and shot that group, okay? And then I shot that group. So they came back. Data point from nothing fancy. Take it or leave it. Uh, here's the red dot 1522 MOE. That's my gun. No magnification, shooting at 25 yards. Of course, the group's gonna open up a little bit. There's a really crappy group right there. Yeah, I shot that, I'll claim it. Don't know what happened there, vertical stringing. There's another one. I was just goofing around there. There's one, one, I gotta go quick. Okay, right there, right there. We're gonna end with this one. Lots of shooting, I told you that. This is at 50 yards. That's the one with the three by nine scope. This is what I came up with. There's a 0.8 inch group, 2.75 inch, two and a quarter inch, 3.75 inch shooting federal bulk. I'd run out of CCI. 
excuse me. I think, honestly, if I was shooting CCI, these groups would be a lot tighter. So this is crap ammunition. This is what I was getting, 2.3 inches. So if you were to push that out to 100 yards, what do you have? Maybe four MOA? Okay, that's what I, maybe, I will say, actually, with really good ammunition, I'll call the 1522, just broad stroke and the accuracy, three MOA. Okay, three MOA, crappy ammunition, four MOA. Are there other tactical 22s that shoot better than this? Yeah, I think there are. I think the 1522, I'm not 15, but the uh, SIG 522 is a little bit more accurate. Maybe even um, the Caltech. You know, does it really matter? No, it really doesn't. Not for the philosophy of use that I designated right as the video began. Moving along. Firepower. Again, we're talking about a tactical 22. It's one that mimics the centerfire counterpart. Helps you train with it. Maybe it's a test bed, like I said, with your AR-15. 25 rounds is excellent. Okay, it allows the fun to continue. And I think when we're talking about 22s, like I've always said, firepower is uh, the more rounds it holds, the funner it is, the less reloading you have to do. I think the magazines, for the most part, are excellent as well. I love the magazine loading tab on them, that you can do that. They're much easier to load than the BDM magazines. You know, I already talked about the closed design versus the open design, the disadvantages of that, getting some crap in there, maybe causing some feed problems. By the way, they do make a 10 round version of this. It has a 10, it has a blue follower, and it doesn't have the tabs to help you pull the follower down to load. Check out the solution for T, from TMP Research. You just cut out a piece of coat hanger and you pull that down. And he reports, I haven't seen this, but he says the 10 rounders are really a mother to load. Very difficult uh, for whatever spring they put in there. Firepower is excellent. I have no problems with it all. And overall, again, a, a good magazine. Uh, easy to take apart, too. So I talked about maybe I have some dust in there. You can see it right there, caked on the floor plate. It's easy to take apart. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the magazines apart, take out the springs, and I'm just going to wash them with some degreaser and a hot bucket of water and air dry them and really get them clean, and I'll shoot again. We'll see if I still have some of those magazine issues I was talking about. Weight, balance, and feel. I think I talked about that. Five and a half pounds. The balance is maybe not exactly like a, a regular M4 AR-15, but I sure do like it. Swings into action fast. You can shoot with it for long periods of time. Won't get tired. The feel is all AR-15, man. You know that, and that is a good thing, and that takes us right into ergonomics. That was a quick talk point, by the way. Weight, balance, and feel. I think most of I talk about it. Ergonomics in the MOE version are just simply marvelous. Love them, okay? I love the MOE grip. I will never change that out. I love, you know, the MOE stock on the back too. I, I, you know, I've ran that on my AR-15s for a long time. Here's a big plus for the MOE version that I talked about in the SHOT Show vid with uh, Smith & Wesson. The integration of a single point sling attachment. In the role of a tactical 22, again, mimicking the real AR-15, that is critical for me. Your mileage may vary. You, may, you, you might run a two point sling and you can with a quad rail coming back tying in here. With such a lightweight gun, I just run single point and it works just fine for me. Uh, love that attachment though. Uh, ergonomics, uh, again, all AR-15 and it's excellent. If you don't like anything, maybe you got this version or the, you know, the plain barrel one for whatever reason, it takes you know, AR-15 grips. There's a standard A2 pistol grip, standard six position you know, stock, uh, excellent. Length of pull, when we're talking about ergonomics, is adjustable. You know, another big plus for the type. By the way, that buffer tube is fake. It's just, you know, solid polymer. Mimicking, again, the AR-15. I think I mentioned this. The trigger on the regular MP 1522 not so great. Standard AR-15 variety. It's a rat-grade trigger. Again, I love that it can take uh, an aftermarket AR-15 trigger. This is a Rock River two-stage, once again. And uh, I gave this to a dude that I was shooting with at the range. Let him crank a few rounds through the 1522, and he remarked, he's like, wow, that's a nice trigger. He's like, that is sweet. Uh, apparently an experienced rifleman himself. He can tell the difference. I told him, I was like, yeah, that's Rock River Arms. Like, oh, man, I love it. Very big plus. Can you live with a stock trigger like this one? Yeah, you saw the accuracy I was achieving with it. It's, you know, it's not a, it's not a make or break deal on it. Some guys will like to swap it out. I'm one of those guys. I like nice triggers on my guns. Uh, the MOE so M-Bus sights is what I'm trying to say. The polymer variety from Macpul, they're excellent. My only beef with them at overall is they just don't sit very low if you want to run, I don't know, a scope. 
on top of them. But for my setup here, running the TRS-25 with YHM, you know, uh, space rail spacers, uh, it works perfectly. In fact, my sights are co-witnessed through the TRS-25 with that. And the M-Bus sights take standard AR-15 posts. And check this out. I'm running a thinner one, kind of a match one with a bead that I got from Brownells on that one. I just like the sight picture better. I did shoot the iron sights extensively with these guns as well, and I liked them. Uh, the one in the background wears these ones. Removable, although they're heavy, they're very serviceable, very A2-like. Fully adjustable for windage and elevation. Front post can be swapped out. It should be oriented like that, I believe. Okay, and they're excellent. They're just heavy, so I took them off, saved a little bit of weight. Operation on the guns is, again, just like the regular AR-15 M4. Okay, that is a huge thing. And again, one of the biggest advantages of the 1522 last shot hold open, easy enough to do when you have dedicated magazines. In other words, proprietary magazines. The main reason the BDM magazine doesn't do that is because it's a jack of all trades mag. Okay, it goes in a kel -Tec, it goes in a lot of 22 AR-15 conversions. So there's really no way they can put a, uh, a tab on the magazine that will interface with all those different platforms. You know, with Smith & Wesson, their proprietary magazine, they can't because they know where that tab's going to go. That finger right there is what, you know, locks a bolt open last shot. In fact, your bolt release, all it does is push that down, releases a bolt. Okay, ergonomics, outstanding. Everything you would want uh, in an AR-15 trainer is in the 1522. I probably forgot some stuff. I may have to annotate it. Field strip and maintenance. Simple, simple, simple. Do I have time? Probably not. The video will always go long because I include stuff like field strip for guys that want to see it. Um, let me see. Where did my little field strip tool? There we go. Okay, so magazine's out. Safe direction. Safety's on. Rack it several times. And then we just push out the takedown pin with our little takedown pin tool. Just like an AR-15, dudes. Okay, no surprises. You can see there's a fair amount of dirt in this gun from the testing. Haven't cleaned it. Badge of honor, look at all that dirt on this thing. That's sick. Pull out the charging handle, and no, it's not interchangeable with a real AR-15. It's a dedicated proprietary charging handle. Okay, and there you see the bolt rails, everything steel on steel. There's your extractor. There's your charging handle. And to take it apart, real simple, very similar to the CMMG 22 conversion I talked about. I'm not gonna do it for camera time. Just take it apart, clean everything, lightly lubricate it, I put a little bit of a uh, Militech lube right here. Seemed to work okay. There's all kinds of lubrications. There's your fixed ejector right there. I did have a malfunction where the shell actually got caught behind that ejector. Okay, kind of weird. Uh, but there's your takedown, dudes. I mean, seriously, that's that's all you need to do. It's much simpler than the Keltec SU-22. About as simple as a Sig 522. Field strip and maintenance on the 1522 is simple, simple, simple. And notice the chrome plated bolt. Good job. That is a quick look. Field strip and maintenance. It's simplicity at its best. Couple points I forgot to mention on ergonomics. Goes something like this. Just like a regular AR-15, the uh, selector arc on the 1522 is just 90 degrees. Just like that. You know, a lot of guys say, well, duh, that's the way it should be. You're right, it should be that way. But on the Colt Umarex Tactical 22, and its competitor, and again, this is a snapshot in time, 2010, it requires a 180 degree throw in order to take it off safe into fire mode. Goofy. Again, if your POU is an AR-15 trainer, we want it to be like an AR-15 as much as possible. Again, the big advantage is last shot hold open, the bolt release functions as it should, in a, just like a real AR-15. Apparently, same with a safety selector. By the way, I forgot to mention this. Trigger pull as measured on my scale with my Rock River arms installed in the 1522, which was a very simple job, by the way, four pounds. A little bit more, a little bit less. I did about five pulls. I was coming up about four pounds, four and a half pounds on a couple, seven pounds on the stock trigger. Again, it's not a, a, a deal breaker for me, the stock trigger. Man, I like those light triggers. That's when you can fire them fast and accurately, and especially for those long shots, it throws off your sight picture, you know, so much less, which is a good thing. Um, accessories, AR-15. Dudes, you get it. I mean, it's an AR-15 22 caliber is about the only difference. Uh, anything externally that you can put on a regular AR-15 can ride on your 1522. 
You know, like I said, the stocks, the grips. Oh, and by the way, that Colt Umarex, it cannot take an AR-15 grip. Proprietary receiver, apparently, is my understanding. I hope I'm not wrong on that. Um, but the 1522 can. You don't like the MOE? Put something else on there. You know, all kinds of VGs you can run on it. A lot of rail space. And the rail is relatively thin. It's not a fat rail. Great job, Smith & Wesson. Nothing worse than a fat rail where I'm forced to run a VG. Hate that. That's just my pet peeve. I do not like it. Uh, bad thing on the kel SU-22 is there was limited rail space right here. See it? Dominated by the 1522. I mean, you can throw on whatever you want. Uh, one of my requirements, uh, I would say a requirement, maybe that's a little bit hard, but I like it, is a night capability with my, with my 22 uh, trainer. And so I can throw a light on the side. I don't have it mounted right now. You're going to see some night nice. shooting with these. You've seen night shooting already with a AR 1522 conversions, like a lot in TMP. This one's set up. Look at all the real estate you got. It'll take all the accessories, all the sights. Of course, the innards, about the trigger group, is, is of course, is all it can take. Magazines, of course, are the 22 variety. But it, it still has amazing interchangeability with the full size counterparts. That's all I'm going to say for time and accessories. On to value. I'll tell you this, it's expensive. I'm gonna ballpark it. Uh, Smith & Wesson 1522, depending on the variety and of course where you get it, what kind of deal you get, maybe around $425 to $575. That's just a wide range. The 1522 MOE, hands down, is my favorite version. Hands down. Snapshot in time, I went to our friend's gallery of guns. There's an annotation right there. They are having a special Ship to my FFL uh, or one, I just used uh, Impact Guns for reference, $500 for the MOE version. Still a lot of money. I'm not going to lie to you. That's a chunk of change for a 22. And again, the SU-22 dominates a lot of these others in value. It's like $200 less, maybe $150 less. But still, with the MOE version, actually the version in the back, uh, model number 811-033, that one, you're getting a lot of gun. You know, retractable stock, removable sights, threaded barrel. Decent magazine, all the ergonomics and training factors I've talked about in the review. Um, to me, that is good value, and it's something that is uh, fulfills all the POUs I said. And a lot of guys just turn it into their project gun. That it is an end into itself. It's not necessarily a training gun. It's just a project gun. They have fun putting a whole bunch of different optics on it, tricking it out, putting a bipod on it. Uh, remember my caveat: it is a polymer frame, so if you put a lot of weight up here, you know you might see weird things happen to your accuracy. I don't know, that's just me. I think you might experience some frame flex if you really get on it. Uh, value is, I will say medium to moderate. If you take into account all the stuff you're getting and you don't have to go out and buy like this outstanding MOE furniture, I will say it's excellent. Okay, value is always in the eye of the beholder. Finally, track record on the 1522. Relatively new gun, it hasn't been out a while, but honestly at this point, I have enough data of my uh, within you know the Nut and Fancy project to speak with some authority on it. I think the track record is excellent. I didn't experience any breakages at all. Uh, it was tough. It was nice very shot. accurate in the running gun. Very accurate. If I did my part, it did its part, and I connected with steel pretty much 100% of the time. If I missed, it was my fault. Um, is it 100% reliable? No. It's a 22. Okay, like I've said, if you don't like the reliability of a 22, then shoot centerfire. Be, be prepared, you know, to, you know, pay $4,500, $45 per run versus, I don't know, $6. You know, it's pretty close. 99% reliable, 98% reliable. That's just a ballpark. For the ergonomics that you achieve with the 1522, the cool factor, I didn't really talk about that, second type of cool, it is a sheep and wolf's clothing, which I think is cool. It just has a second type of cool. You can't afford a real AR-15, and you know the ammunition or the gun itself. 1522, dude. There you go. Smith and Wesson did a great job with it. I really don't have a problem with the polymer receiver. It is what it is, with a few caveats there. There you have it. Totally out of time, like I always am. That is the Net and Fancy tabletop review on the Smith and Wesson 1522 series. Mostly an outstanding gun mostly an outstanding. I have no plans whatsoever to ever sell mine. See ya. I felt pretty good about that, Ron. Yeah. 1522 ran pretty good. No jams in it this time. 
It's getting dirty and dusty. Oh, I got some fire. This stage is pretty dirty too. Oh, I'm tired. 